Hello again, everybody, and welcome to a new season of Warriors Walk Off here on HBC TV 25. I'm Justin Barrientos. Thanks for joining us. And uh, back at the uh, baseball and softball game now as we uh, talk with uh, Warrior head coach Kyle Polk. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for having us. Yeah, it's, it. It, it's fun to get this uh, show back up and running again. Yeah, it's been a while. So it's, uh, like I said, some people have asked about it, why we're not having them, and some of the players have, but it's, uh, so when you guys call, I thought, hey, perfect, it's great, get back down here. And, and uh, be able to bring some players in and have them talk about our program. Oh, very good. Uh, well, very, we're very excited to do it. I, now, as I was doing research about the program, I got one statistic that just really stood out to me. Uh, last season, you guys were under 500 uh, during the regular season, but 19 and 17 in NSIC play. And it said that you have not had a losing record in conference play in 45 years. That's an incredible mark. And basically, it's you and Coach Grob uh, before you, so two coaches over 45 years not having a losing mark in conference play. That's amazing. Yeah, that's and we, and we kind of talk about that with the kids in our program when we're recruiting them about the consistency. Uh, this is my 14th year. Coach Grubb was here for 35 years, so they've had two coaches here in 49 years. Uh, there's not a lot of programs that have done that in, uh, throughout the country. And with that, we've also had the consistency with our conference. You know, we've been pretty good, and, and we've done well. He said 40-plus years of over 500 records in conference play. So you said you talked to the players about that. Uh, how much is that um, a motivation during the season to kind of keep that streak going? Well, it was uh, <laughs> until last year when we had the lose, first losing season in a while uh, due to some injuries and issues and that. So that, But we kept trying to use that, hey, do, are you guys want to be part of the team that was the first team to not have a f over 500 record? Uh, so we kind of used that. We really pushed, played well at the end of last year, uh, didn't quite get over the hump. Uh, if you look at our record now, we're at 3-10, and 10, but we've played – you know, we played six teams, I think, that were in the NCAA regionals play last year, two teams that were in the World Series, or one, one that was in and one that was uh, an out away from being in the World Series last year. So our preseason play is always against the top competition we get to, So and it gears us up for the conference. So now our emphasis is this, we need to play well in the conference, do well in the conference, and qualify for the conference tournament. Yeah. and then make sure that we get that record back over the hump and get over the 500 record. Yeah, conference season uh, starts this weekend. We'll get to that in a minute, but yep. uh, you were picked to finish fifth uh, in the conference, and you start out the year uh, with some non-conference teams, then you went out to Florida. Uh, talk a little bit about that Florida trip. Florida trip was, uh, it was it's great for us. We, you know, we're playing good competition. We played Seton Hill the first day. They were a regional team. Uh, they beat us, but it was, you know, the game was close early. The second game was, uh, I believe, Walsh University, and uh, that's one we let slip away. Uh, but then we went and played the Florida schools, Florida Tech, which was one all the way from the World Series. Uh, had a decent, we played better with them. Uh, they beat us. And then we had Florida Southern, who we've been playing since, I think, 2007 or 8. We've been playing them every year. Got a good relationship with their coaches and their program. And that was, again, you know, they've won nine national titles in their history and we uh, again two nothing lead on them and two one and then we just let it slip away at the end uh, but we played better we're starting to see the, the light at the end of the tunnel I think and then the last day we split and we finally started scoring runs we scored 18 runs on a day and we split uh, a, a double header but it was against two different teams so it's mm -hmm. two nine inning games and finally won the last one nine to one and everything kind of came together on that last day uh, so it was a good growing experience our pitching staff were really Pitching staff pitched pretty well, but it's a matter of we're trying to figure out who we're going to use in which situations. If you look at last year's roster and this year's roster, there's seven guys that could be pitching for us that aren't with us right now. Mm -hmm. uh, two, three of them basically from injuries, and then four decided because of academic reasons or whatever that they decided not to play there last year. Uh, well, three did that because one graduated in December and the other two just decided that the academics was more important mm -hmm. and one transferred for academic reasons. But the big three that could be playing for us are all guys who are potentially starters for us. Uh, so we've got a whole new starting rotation basically and we're trying to figure out our bullpen and it's, uh, it's been interesting but we got some young arms that can throw so it's just a matter of getting them some experience. And you have a pretty good relief pitcher in uh, Mitch Voter who is uh, one of the players to watch uh, for Winona State this year along with Tyler Nearing who will be our guest a little bit later on. Talk about uh, Mitch and, and what he does for the team. Well Mitch is an interesting character. He's, uh, he really lights things up with the team but he's a guy that he only was able to play for us two years. He went to Alabama and graduated in three and a half years in pre-med. So what he's doing now, he's taking grad classes to study for his, uh, whatever the test is you take for medical school. And he's applied to medical schools. Uh, but he's a guy that we tried to recruit out of high school. His brother Jay's with us. Jay's been a four-year starting pitcher for us. But Mitch is a guy that's dh for us as well, but he's a guy at the back end of the bullpen that, uh, again, he's, he hasn't given up a run. He gave, in his last year, he gave up three runs 
only one was earned, uh, didn't give up a run in conference, and he started out this year the same way. Uh, he actually came in the game that we won down there in the last inning, struck out three guys, and they didn't, they didn't have a chance. He's a, he's a 92 to 94 mile an hour guy, and he throws hard and knows how to throw strikes. Yeah, 0 0.39 ERA last year, six saves, so pretty yeah. good numbers. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. and like I said, in the in conference, he didn't give up a run. Uh, he should have been first team all conference, I think. But uh, the people in the regional saw what he did, and they voted him second team all region like behind the guy from Henderson State who went to the World Series. i got to ask you a little bit about getting into conference action now this weekend. It's been about two weeks uh, since you came back from Florida. What kind of, uh, what does that do for your layoff, you know, in between the Florida games and now what you play this weekend? Well, what we, yeah, it's, you'd, like to be, you'd like to play and get in a rhythm. But when we came back, we also, the weather was good enough here. We were on our field all four days last week, I think, or was it three out of the four, Tyler, whatever. But uh, the last two days we scrimmaged, so we were able to do scrimmage, things that we wanted to work on, things that we wanted to correct. Uh, one of the things that we didn't do well in Florida was hitting with runners in scoring position. We like basically left a small village of people on bases down there, and that cost us a couple of games. So what we did on our scrimmages on Thursday, we started every inning with a guy on third base. And we mm -hmm. had some consequences if you didn't score them, but actually we didn't have to do any of that because our guys did a really good job. So we're trying to really work on the mindset. And what, what is their approach at the plate? What are you trying to do? Is your job to get on base to start an inning, or is your job to advance runners, or are you going to score runners? So we really worked on those aspects. Uh, defensively, we have to work on some things because the fields now are going to be a little bit different than the ones we mm -hmm. played at in Florida. Uh, down there you're playing on tabletops and they're fast and they're smooth and there's not a lot of bad hops and we're going to start playing on fields here that who knows what you're going to get. So <laughs> so just a, a getting back in the swing of things. We'll take this week to really uh, work on some other little things but get gearing ourselves for, for Friday's opener. Yeah, we have just about a minute left in this segment. Uh, for those that aren't uh, familiar with college baseball or at least the way that it's set up in the NSIC, you have double headers you know, Friday, Saturday now all the way throughout the rest of the season. Yep. How difficult is it to, to have to play four games within two days? Well, the doubleheaders, we're kind of used to doing that. What, what really gets to the grind is the first weekend we have four, the second weekend we have four, and then after that second one we start midweek. Mm -hmm. So now we're going six games a week of conference. That's where it gets to be, and that's where it taxes your, uh, your pitching staff, whatever. The first two weekends with the four, we should be fine. Uh, the first game is a seven-inning game, then the second game is a nine-inning game. Uh, if the first inning goes extra innings, well, then that becomes the long one, and then the sh second one becomes seven-inning games. But it's... it's uh, you know, we've been preparing all year long for this. We've been practicing how many months. Uh, our strength and conditioning guy does a great job with these guys. Kyle Check getting these guys ready so physical they're able, physically they're able to handle it. Uh, and hopefully they're all excited to get going and start playing because now it becomes regular. It's the next seven weeks it's play ball. All right, we're going to take a break here on Warriors Walk Off, and when we come back we'll talk with uh, Tyler Nearing. who will come right after this. Warriors Walk Off on HBC TV 25 is brought to you by Jefferson Pub & Grill. Meet me at the levee for fabulous food and drinks at Jefferson Pub & Grill. Come check out their great nightly specials and limited time offer menu, Jefferson Pub & Grill. Go beyond entertainment with HBC GigaWorld and get the broadband experience. Video chat without buffering. Stream your favorite shows and movies with TV to go. Dominate your online games and more with gigabit internet speeds. Watch over 300 video channels, including high definition, sports, HBO, Cinemax, Stars Plus, Encore, Showtime, and more. Call friends and family with reliable, crystal clear, unlimited local and domestic long distance phone service. Experience broadband the way it's meant to be with HBC GigaWorld. Visit HBCI.com to get started today. And welcome back to Warriors Walk Off here on HBC TV 25. Time now to talk to the players, and uh, Tyler Nearing joins us. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, I want to start with last season, uh, because you had a breakout year last season uh, for the Warriors, 65 hits, uh, second on the team in a lot of categories. You had a 351 batting average, 411 on base percentage. Uh, what was it about last season that allowed you to break out like that? Uh, I mean, I just kind of, Knew my role as on the team, and um, I guess I just kind of, um, you know, trusted in my abilities. Um, went out and at the end, of, I kind of struggled during the middle of the year, um, but at the end of the year, just kind of turned it back on. The tournament started and stuff, and uh, you know, I just relaxed and had fun, played baseball, and that's what it's all about. Coach, talk to us about what you saw from uh, Tyler last season and what he means to the team. Well, uh, you know, last year, yeah, he did have a breakout year, but his year before, you know, he was all-conference shortstop for us, an all-region player. But because of injuries last year, he, we had to, he started out playing shortstop, and then we had four outfielders go down, so I ended up putting him in center field. 
I think that center field time was kind of struggle a little bit trying to get his ways. But Tyler's a baseball player. Mm -hmm. That's what, you know, you, you try to, you, some guys think they're penciled at one spot, but Tyler, wherever you got to play him now, he's starting third base for us this year, oh. starting third baseman. So, uh, but the thing is, he's always focused. He knows what he has to do. Like the things I talked about in the last segment about what is your job and certain at bats, I don't have to worry about Tyler. Tyler knows what those are. He, like I said, his baseball IQ is really high and his ability to play any position is what helps us. But uh, I think it struggled a little bit last year with playing the alpha, but again, once we got, we ended up putting him back at shortstop when our center fielder came back and was healthy and that got him back in the zeroed in and was able to put up some good numbers and actually was between him and Jesus Casares really carried mm -hmm. us uh, through the end of the season and into the tournament. Let's talk a little bit about that transition from shortstop to center field. It seems to be a pretty big one, infield, outfield. Uh, tell us about uh, what that was like to have to play out there. Uh, it was a little different, um, obviously, but I guess I've played everywhere my whole life. Um, when I was little, my parents always said, you know, just go out and hit and be able to play wherever you can and they'll find a spot for you. So I guess that's just kind of my mentality is wherever they put me, I'll play. If I'm in the lineup, I'm happy, and I'm, I'm going to go out and I'm going to hit and I'm going to have some fun. What was the difference in, in tracking balls and defense? Uh, have the you know, now drag uh, pop-ups and, and that sort of thing? Yeah, it was, it was a little, obviously a little different. Um, playing in center was actually, it was probably better than playing in the corner uh, outfield because you're able to see the ball, you're able to see the ball a little bit better off the bat. I've been up the middle playing short and all that, so I was able to kind of transition a little bit easier. The first game was a little weird, but after that, um, just kind of settled in wherever they put me in. That was that. Did you have to kind of lean on the right fielder and left fielder a little bit at the beginning oh, yeah. and kind of let them take the balls? Well, the funny thing was is with the injuries we had, we had probably three infielders out in the <laughs> outfield last year. Yeah. So we were all kind of helping each other out and talking a lot and making sure we knew what each other was doing. Um, but yeah, it was it was definitely different, but it was it was fun. So now the move over to third base, how's that going? It's same same sort of deal. Um, when at the end of last season, KP told me um, that I'd probably be at third base this year, so I played third all summer um, and then all fall. So that helped a lot coming into this year, knowing I'm going to be at third and being able to practice at third all year. You were tabbed as one of the players to watch this year in the NSIC conference. Does that kind of add any pressure to it, or is that something that you kind of ignore and just say, yeah, that's nice to have? Uh, Preseason pre doesn't really mean anything. So um, I guess I just go out and I try to play the game the way it's supposed to be played. Don't really worry about what everybody else is saying, what else is going on around me. Um, so not, not really. It doesn't really affect anything. From the coaching standpoint, I know that every year there, there's players to watch. They tab those, but when they come out, did you pay any attention to that? Honestly, no, not really. <laughs> Same thing, I, I, and we talk about the preseason baseball polls, the, the country, uh, nationwide stuff. But, you know, nice to have that pub publicity, I guess, is what you're looking for, a PR. Mm -hmm. But uh, really what counts is what you're doing the last couple of weeks of the season and where you are when it comes time to conference time, whatever that. And if you do your job all year long, you'll get that end of the season accolades. Uh, the coaches in the league will know that, yeah, this is a guy like Tyler should be a guy that should be in the running for all conference and that stuff. So, but again, it's based on his play. It's not based on, well, he was a preseason player because that doesn't mean anything. So, so yeah, we don't put a lot of stock into that stuff. All right. Like I said, at the beginning of the show, I do a little research. I try to look up whatever I can from you. And I saw uh, on your Twitter account, you had posted a picture of your teammates on the way back from Florida on the flight and everybody's <laughs> sleeping. They head back. That was a pretty good picture. Uh, your reaction to that? <laughs> uh, Florida Sun got to us, I guess. Uh, our, one of our assistant coaches, Pat Riley, took the picture and we're all just passed out on the plane. Everybody's sleeping. So, I mean, being down in Florida was, it was awesome. Um, but that Florida Sun, yeah, it'll get to you. All right, and last question for this segment. Uh, conference season starting up this weekend. Uh, what do you guys have to do to be successful? Uh, we, just, we just have to go out and relax and play baseball the way we know how to play it. Um, we play best when we're having fun. No, and, you know, we're not tense. We're not feeling any pressure. We go out and we just play baseball the way we have always played our whole lives. And um, if we do that, I think the, the ceiling is ours. All right. Well, good luck this weekend, and uh, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. All right, we're going to take a break here on Warriors Walk-Off. When we come back, we'll talk to the softball team. That's right after this. Warriors Walk-Off on HBC TV 25 is brought to you by Jefferson Pub & Grill. Meet me at the levee for fabulous food and drinks at Jefferson Pub & Grill. Come check out their great nightly specials and limited-time offer menu, Jefferson Pub & Grill. 
And welcome back to Warriors Walk Off here on HBC TV 25. Time now to turn to the Warriors softball program. Greg Jones, the head coach, joining us now. Thanks for joining us. You bet. Thanks for having me. I want to start out by talking about you a little bit um, because you hit a milestone uh, last season. Uh, 600 career victories. Uh, you got that on, uh, against the University of Mary on April 11th. Does that kind of milestone mean anything to you at this point, or is that something that you're going to be kind of looking at once your career is over? Yeah, I think more of the latter. I think when you're done, you look back and see what you're able to accomplish. It, you know, that was still just a, a day in a game, and, mm -hmm. and uh, to be honest, I didn't even know it was a milestone that day. And, and uh, we had won the game, and, and uh, Eric, our AD, had came over to the dugout and asked me to come out you know, to the pitcher's mound with them. I still thought we were going to look at something on the pitcher's mound. And, <laughs> and they made the announcement. And it's nice. It just means that we've had a lot of success and we've had a lot of great players and great coaches and that kind of stuff. And as cliche as it sounds, it's really all it is. You're just trying to get through the next game and the next day. And so uh, I think when we're done, you, you know, in, in a game that we count everything, everything, everybody's got their numbers in this game. That's just another number. And, and maybe when we're all done, we'll, we'll reflect and see, okay, we had had more W's than losses, you know. All right, well, it's been a lot of success for you. Uh, nine consecutive NCAA tournaments, uh, 11 out of the last 13 years. And when you come in, it only took you three seasons at the helm to be the all-time winningest coach at, at Winona State. So I want to ask you about when you came in, the state of the program as it was. What was it about the, um, the job that, that kind of attracted you to it? Well, I think what really attracted me to the job at the beginning was just the opportunity. You know, there was an opportunity to be had to, to be a collegiate coach, and that was something I wanted to do. And I was their third coach in three years, and, and there wasn't a lot of stability at the time. And, you know, Larry Holstead, I owe an awful lot to him. He's been a great mentor to me and a good friend and, and hired me. And he was coaching the team at the time and, and called and asked if I would be interested. And I said yes. And, and I didn't really know what I was getting into. And uh, um, But the, the great part was I took over a program that uh, – had some great players in it and we had some solid pitching and some good hitters and and all they really needed was a little bit of direction a little bit of passion and, and we were able to instill a culture early and been able to kind of ride that culture for a long time so the success that you've been having is it kind of a mix of what what your philosophy is or with the players or a little bit of both everything like well that? i don't think we win without talent um so obviously we've got some talented kids but but I, I believe greatly that winning is 90% culture and 10% strategy. Uh, I, I think you have to teach kids how to win, teach them how to be passionate, teach them how to play for each other. And we've been very fortunate that we have kids that buy in. And uh, they buy in quickly. Uh, the kids police themselves. And uh, um, you know, very rarely do we have to step in and do things like that. But, but we do a lot of preaching about culture and passion and having energy and how we're going to play the game and, and staying hungry and, and, and doing whatever it takes to be successful. Successful and, and um, because you have a choice of how you play this game and, and, and we try to make sure that we're playing harder and faster and hungrier than anybody else every day and if we can do that we'll be successful more times than not. All right let's talk a little bit about this season now 18 and 5 uh, so far in uh, this past weekend you had some big games so talk about the games that you had against Missouri Southern and Emporia. Uh, it was a great day yesterday. You know, we, we've struggled a little bit offensively this year, um, and, and maybe if you look at some of our run production numbers, you could disagree with that, but I, I, I think <laughs> we've struggled a little bit offensively this year. Uh, we, where, where we have struggled offensively is, is our consistency, to put big innings together, and then that's what we were able to do yesterday. We were able to put crooked numbers on the board, and I thought yesterday was the best offensive day we've had by far. We hit the ball harder. Outs were hard hits. We hit line drives at people. We hit line drives in the gap. We hit the ball at the ballpark. And, uh, we've lacked a little bit of power. Um, we haven't hit the ball in the ballpark. Our extra base hits a lot, and it takes a lot of base hits in a row to get to score a run. And, and uh, uh, so we were leaving a lot of people on base. And, and this weekend was a good weekend to finally get that monkey off our back, and I think feel some confidence. And, and uh, we had some consistency in our lineup for the first time, where I think people are getting comfortable where they're at, and, and all of that stuff helps us. Have you had to switch uh, players and positions that they're playing? Um, we have probably had more lineups this year than I've ever had in my career. I'm kind of a guy that likes to ride his horses and say, okay, this is where we're going to be, let's go. And you just kept trying to figure out not who fit in what spot in the order, but who fed into what spot in the order, who were going to be our run producers, who was going to create our offense, and um, really trying to figure that out and, and, and what fed into the next spot. Um, I still don't know that we've gotten it yet, but I think we feel a lot more comfortable with it now. 
I know that uh, in the past when we've done the show, you've had uh, pitching staffs where it's been like a one and two, mm -hmm. and then you have a couple other players that maybe make spot starts, but mm -hmm. you, you basically have the, a couple of big pitchers, and you kind of have that again this year. Uh, talk about what your pitching staff is this year. Oh, uh, you know, Hannah is is our true number one, and uh, Hannah's had a great career here so far, and and uh, you know was a preseason pitcher of the year for us, and 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 I and I think Hannah will continue to be that kid. We've been really happy with how Alex and, and McKenna have stepped into their role. I think coming in. That was the question we had: was uh, how good are we going to be behind Hannah? Uh, I think our team has a lot of confidence in her. I think Hannah has a great presence about her, um, and continues to do that and win games for us. And and uh, she continues to give us a chance to win every day out there because she's not going to give up a lot of offense to the other guy. And and but Alex has really settled in. Her presence has, has been very good. She's controlling her off-speed stuff. She's throwing to contact well, and and we're able to play great defense behind her. But we're always going to win in this program based on our pitching and our defense. And and. Uh, that's what's going to keep us in games. That's what's going to win us championships in the end. And, and our pitching staff has really been big in this year, allowing us to do that. And Hannah has uh, nine of your 18 wins. Is that right? Yeah. Already this season? Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, I, I think uh, Hannah's a senior. We, we told her now the gloves are off, that she doesn't need her arm next year. So it's, uh, we're, we're going to ride her as long as we can. And she'll, she'll throw every game one for us. And we'll have her in relief in every game, too. And, and uh, you know, it's kind of going to be her season from here on out. All right, uh, talk about your offense, because you said you've kind of been uh, struggling a little bit offensively in, in your perspective. Mm -hmm. Is there a goal that you're looking at um, game to game or season long that, that you're looking at? Our goal is always simple, get to four. If we get to four, we should win. I think our pitching and our defense will, will hold teams, and, and uh, um, it doesn't matter how we get to four. If we've got a suicide squeeze in the first inning to get the first one and play for a run all the way through, we'll do it. If we've got to win one and up, then we'll do that. But I, I really believe if we score four runs, we should win that game game and so um, if we can get crooked numbers and, and, and get more than that that's that's gravy you know and, and uh, we in the past have been a power hitting team get a lot of extra base hits you know drive in a lot of runs and, and, and you know put up some gaudy numbers that that isn't this group yet I, I think it'll get there um, so right now our, our goal is always to be four and hold on tight. All right, and I guess the last question, we have just about a minute left. Uh, this team is basically the same from last year. I think Ashley Walker maybe is the biggest uh, mm -hmm. subtraction from the team. Uh, how much does that hurt to not have her this year? Well, I think Ashley, Jess, and Morgan are all losses because of who they were to us culturally. You know, they, they'd been around a long time, and they were kind of the lead bulls in the clubhouse. And, and uh, um, so it's a matter of people filling that role as well as the offensive role. But, but I, what's really been nice is only three subtractions means everybody's back who understands that culture and has a feel for what we're trying to do. So I think in-house we've been able to do that, and, and uh, we feel very comfortable with our group. All right, we're going to take a break here on Warriors Walk Off, and when we come back, the player perspective right after this. Warriors Walk Off on HBC TV 25 is brought to you by Jefferson Pub and Grill. Meet me at the levee for fabulous food and drinks at Jefferson Pub and Grill. Come check out their great nightly specials and limited time offer menu, Jefferson Pub and Grill. We chose HBC because they're a local company. They have a big audience in Winona, which is the geographic group that we're looking for. Mel is very easy to work with. She's genuinely concerned about how our money is being spent, and she does everything she can to make sure we get the most for our money. She takes care of us, so whenever there's a problem, which is rarely, I know that I can go to her and she's going to take care of it. To see how HBC Advertising can help your company, call Melanie at 507-474-5802. And welcome back to Warriors Walk Off here on HBC TV 25. Time now to talk uh, softball with Chelsea Rodenkirk, uh, senior infielder for the uh, Warriors softball team. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, your college career because this is uh, your first season that you're playing for Winona State. Uh, yep. Prior to that, at Southwest Minnesota State. Uh, talk about you know what led you to to Southwest first. Um, you know, just the opportunity to play college softball it was always my dream growing up, um, and they gave me an opportunity on a scholarship there. So that's where that took me. And yeah, that's and, about it. And then uh, last year you didn't play at all. Uh, was that Correct. due to injury or a transfer? Or? Um, transfer rule, yep. If okay. you transfer within the conference, you have to sit out a year. OK. And what was your decision to come here to Winona State? Um, in high school, it was always my dream to come to Winona. And I just didn't have the opportunity right away. And got to Southwest. I'm very grateful for the experiences there and what I learned. Um, but then it just came down to kind of finding love for the game again. And Coach Jones, I talked to him on the phone, and he promised me that if I came here that he would help me do that. And I did. So, What are some of the things that you saw in Chelsea that made you want to go after her and, and get her transferred transfer to Winona State? Well, it was one of those things that Chelsea decided that uh, 
you know, she wanted her release from Southwest. She talked to the coaching staff there. Uh, I reached out to the coaching staff there and had a long conversation with them. Then Chelsea and I were able to have some conversations and, and uh, you know, we weren't going to recruit out of anybody's dugout. It was a decision she was making. And, and uh, uh, at the time, I think my first conversation with Chelsea, quite honestly, I told her not to come. I said, you want to get your, because she was going to lose a year because she'd already redshirted a year at Southwest mm -hmm. due to injury. Now she's going to have to sit out a year um, at Winona State because of the transfer policy. So she was only going to get three years of college softball. And I didn't want her to lose that. I wanted her to have two years of that experience. Uh, and I said, we still have a lot of kids, you know, uh, that you're going to have to beat out when you get here and that type of thing. But um, thank God she didn't listen. And uh, <laughs> um, she has been a savior to us, both uh, from a cultural standpoint and on the field and on as, you know, as a player for us. And so, you know, it was one of those things. This was something that she wanted and she was really pursuing doggedly. And we told her there's an opportunity here if you want it, but you're going to have to earn it. And, and she's earned it every day since she's been here. All right, let's talk a little bit about that uh, transition to, to come over to a team. You have to learn a whole new set of teammates and, you know, like you said, you know, gain maybe trust, try to beat out some of the players that you're trying to gain the trust of. Uh, what was that like? Um, you know, I'm just the type of person that I'm going to try to make everybody better around me. And I knew that was my role last year is, you know, I couldn't play. So I was going to do everything I can in practice to not only take that year and make myself better, but everybody around me. And I think everybody kind of respected that. And, um, yeah, coming into this year, you know, we had a uh, returning shortstop who ended up not playing this year, but um, still a lot of middle infielders that were around me. And so I just took it one day at a time, doing the best that I could. So what do you do in that year that you can't play, but you're still with the team uh, to be able to, you know, kind of keep your softball acumen going or find your way on the place on the team? What do you do during that off year? Um, I took a lot of time personally to not only work on the physical game, but also the mental game. Uh, we have a sports psychologist that works with us, and so much of the game that we play um, is based around failure and learning to deal with that failure and having confidence in yourself. And so I did a lot of mental training that way, um, but also breaking down every aspect of the game, offensive and defensively, defensively that I could do better. What did you see in what she was doing last season? Uh, that kind of excited you for this season? Well, I think that when we talked before about who we were losing, the, the real benefit for us as a coaching staff was we knew we had a couple of kids in-house. You know, Mariah Schultz had transferred in from Duluth and, and Chelsea was in from Southwest, and we felt like, okay, we've got a couple of kids in-house that it doesn't take freshmen that have never played here, that they're practicing with us for a year, and we can plug them right in and have success immediately with them because of the work they were putting in. That they, they practiced every day like the next day was game day and they knew there was no game day for a year. And, and it was just impressive to watch them do their work. And we would try to shuffle them around a little bit to help us in practice and fill some holes. And it was funny with Chels because I always say, okay, Chels go here, Chels go there. Chels gonna go play shortstop every day. And she was gonna work at that every single day. And she did. And, and uh, um, you know, Mariah, we had her catching, we had her in the outfield and you know, we had her in, on the infield. And with both of them just trying to help do what we could do, just watching them work. and. Chelsea just every day she's in the cage and it, it doesn't take hours. It, it sometimes takes minutes. It's just you know applying yourself to your craft and Chelsea's never stopped doing that for us. At the outset you said that it was kind of always your dream to come here to Winona. Why is, why is that? Um, just watching this coaching staff do what they do is truly amazing. They coach with so much passion and you can tell that the players just feed off of that. And yeah it was my dream to play for a coach like that who just love the game so much and the players did too. Now, we have about a minute left in this segment. Being on the other side, playing against Winona State, what is that like? I mean, what, what is game day like preparing to play Winona State? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> it's very loud. We're very loud. Um, cheer a lot. We kind of, you know, get in, I wouldn't say get in the other team's head, but, you know, we had a team do that to us this past spring, and um, it's interesting to see what other team, what we do to other teams when they do it to us. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I don't know. We can cheering aloud and just doing what we do. All right, very good. Uh, thank you for joining us, and uh, good luck the rest of the season. Thank you. All right, thank you for joining us here on Warriors Walk Off. We'll see you next time here on HBC TV 25.